Hola and welcome to Oh Yes Cinema Club. My name is Marina, aka Dignified Couch Potato. And today we are going to be talking about the movie When Harry Met Sally. Yay! Yay. Um, I chose this movie because I've never motherfucking seen it before. And everyone always says it's good. So I was like, let's see what's good. Um, but not alone. With me tonight, I have the awesome, if we'll ever see their faces again, <laughs> Steve Dez and Jason Eccles. Hey now. Um, yeah, so I feel like people quote it all the time when Harry met Sally, Billy Crystal, Meg Ryan. Um, we'll jump right into first impressions. Um, mm-hmm. Let's go with Jason. Wow, uh, really excited about this one. This is, um, like you said, this is a very quoted, <coughs> excuse me, movie. It's quoted in everything. And if you hadn't seen it, then it's one of those movies where like, after you see it, um, you realize that it's been quoted your entire life and you had no idea what everybody was talking about. Um, yeah, so I saw this movie a while ago. I've seen it a number of times uh, now. I'm never, I'll never turn away from this movie. I'll never kick this movie out of bed because I absolutely love it. As a matter of fact, I love it so much. It's in my top three favorite romantic comedies of all time. And I do believe it's number one, actually. Um, sometimes they'll switch around. But yeah, I think this is a, a perfect romantic comedy. It's uh, clever. It's good writing. You know, it, it, it does some flashback stuff. It, uh, it, it tells a love story over a long period of time, which sometimes, you know, it, which makes it very rewarding. Um, and, and, and so much so they start off, I mean, it's, it's also about finding like a lifelong love. And the movie starts off great where they're interviewing the old people and, you know, that's that's wonderful. It's very cute, right? And then like to see, well, how did they get there? You know, you, you wonder that. You wonder how do you, you know, get to stay married for 60, 70 years and find your person and all that jazz. Uh, this movie kind of has all of that. It's just the trappings of a great romantic comedy. It's very funny. It's Billy Crystal up there, you know, top level Billy Crystal. Uh, Meg Ryan's an absolute star. You watch this thing and you're like, oh, man, like this is why Meg Ryan's a star. She's so funny. She does what very few actors can do where she's just like believable and cute and funny and smart. And, you know, not since like I I feel like maybe. I'm probably missing all types of people in between, but like Diane Keaton kind of did the same thing in Annie Hall. Like maybe you need that level of um, actors so that they can have those type of chemistries. Um, just you just feel like you kind of know her a little bit, you know, like she's sort of like everybody's friend. Um, and this thing is just like the prototype, I think. Awesome. So Jason's in love with Meg Ryan. Okay, uh, <laughs> Steve, what's your first impression? You're not going to unmute yourself? I think you're muted. Uh, 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 <laughs> of course. I got to unmute myself. Uh, first impressions. Uh, i never seen this movie before. Of course I've heard of it. You kind of have heard this title. Unless you're Gen Z or something. <laughs> then definitely you had never heard of this before. But um, I was shocked of how great and easygoing this movie felt. Mm. Uh, it's like one of those movies that I could have playing almost all the time in the background. And like, I wouldn't mind just having it there. It's very soothing. Uh, I really, really enjoyed in this film how they played with each character. Because I was very like paying attention to the details of like how each of them changed, like physically their hair, like all these different things as like time went by. Um, and Overall, I think this is like, now I can see truthfully why this is like a masterpiece of a film, because not only does he have like incredible acting in it, but like it's something that's infinitely universal, especially adding those little scenes of uh, the old people, like talking about their stories, because there's so many stories there that is just like, you go like, oh my God, like. This movie encapsulates in a way what like love kind of is. That like sometimes, yeah, it's like very everlasting. Sometimes it's by chance. Sometimes it's just a matter of the circumstances that you're in. 
Like, I just remember, like, I can't wait to talk about these old people because, like, th their <laughs> stories made me laugh the most. When there was a guy going, like, oh, yeah, I was with that one girl. Which one? And she remembered her name. Oh, Rebecca. Oh, yeah. But then I was, like, with the one chick, with the other chick. And then, <laughs> no, but I, was, I was really looking for you. I have my eye on you. And, like, and she was, like, after five years later, we got married again. And he just had, like, a ping pong history. It was insane. Uh, but overall, yeah, it's a super enjoyable movie. I'm happy I got to see it because, uh, you know, it's one of those movies that you hear so much about it, but if you've never seen it, you kind of don't get around to seeing it. So I'm happy that this Yay. All right. Well, Jim, thank you to my first impression, um, as I said in the intro, it was my first time. Um, and it been in, like, the back of my head that I need to see it. Like, I, I love that genre. I feel like it reminds me of a lot of the movies I used to watch when I was a kid, like Father of the Bride and like any like Steve Martin movie with the um with the woman. <laughs> like it just it gave you that vibe of the past. But yeah, I, I never um I guess knew what the movie was actually about. So from the title, I literally thought it's about these people like that met each other instantly and like fall in love. And it's crazy like how opposite that is to what it was. I, I had no idea that it's like realistic love movie, I guess you could say, a realistic rom-com because like not everything is in a straight line. So um, coming from a person, I love that concept. Like my, um, the song I walked down to the aisle is um, um, Jason Mirez, I Won't Give Up On Us. And it's just like, saying like even the stars burn out and like I love that concept of like love isn't just like this easy street thing that everybody fantasizes about and so I really it might be on my new list of top romantic comedies as well just because I don't know if anything else has been ever been made like that like there are movies where it's just it's hit or miss and things aren't working out but I think those movies are they rely a lot heavily on the comedy. Like it's a lot of like oops a daisy stuff happening. Like this was just a very well paced love story um, that just unraveled. Um, and then it's funny, Steve was talking about the hair differences. They did really good on the makeup because for like 0.2 seconds before they did like any close ups, I thought Billy Crystal was a lot younger than he was. I was like, wait a minute. Like, I feel like he was in another movie just in a couple years and he looks a lot older. I was like, <laughs> oh, it's a wig. And then they did a close up and it was just like, oh, okay. He's a little there. This is a flashback. So I, I like how they did that too. But, um, but yeah, overall, I really, really liked it. Um, actually watched it again today because I watched it a couple days ago. And uh, because I just feel like it was so easy to watch. I was like, I must have missed something. <laughs> like, I don't know. You just really feel like you're just walking with them through life. And so, yeah, um, yeah very well written. Almost too good. But um, yeah, that's almost my first impression. Wow. So. <laughs> I'm actually curious because um, we all think that the movie works clearly. What what is it about this thing that what what makes it work? Good acting, good writing, <laughs> good acting, good writing, good lighting. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it's I guess I kind of said it too. I feel like it's unique, and like yeah, there have been movies out there when people meet up. And it, there might be some bad timing, but I don't know if a movie's ever been written like this to where it's um you just you just feel all the emotions. It, it's and I do like those clippings. Have you guys ever seen a movie that did that? Another I feel like another movie did that. Was it where they was it an Adam Sandler movie where they have like clippings of twins? He does a movie about like having a twin or something. Um and they would like interview other people every once in a while, kind of like that. I can't think of one. Yeah, it was creative. Yeah. Like, um, but also the acting, like they, mm -hmm. they really. I'm gonna I'm gonna piggyback real quick on what you just said. Uh, so the, I really think for sure, having like, not only. Having first a universal theme, 
because it's about love and it's about, you know, growing old with someone, finding your person that you can spend your time with and all that stuff. That's completely a universal theme. And then on top of that, having like in between these like older couples talking about their interactions uh, and how they met each other and things like that, it kind of humanizes the movie much more. And it makes it feel much more real. Like instead of like you're watching a movie, you're kind of watching a documentary. Yeah. You know what else it does? It lets you know upfront that they're gonna make it, right? It's in the title, When Harry Met Sally. And then they start with these old couples talking about how you make it so long. So we know they're gonna make it. So it kind of does a, um, a reveal sort of like uh, how I met your mother, right? We know they're getting together. We just don't know what's going to be the moment that does it. Like, for example, it's probably in the writing, but it's also in the acting choices. He's so disinterested in her in the beginning of the movie. Like, he could really just care less, right? Like, all right, have a nice life. You know what I mean? Like, that never <laughs> don't got to worry about you ever again. And then, like, you know, as time goes on, obviously they become more fond of each other. But, like, and, you know, they're dating other people and all that jazz in between and it's just, uh, it's just we, we, like you said, we grow with them, and it's over a number of years. Uh, it does that. It does that time thing really interesting that makes us sort of like, it raises the stakes and it makes us sort of like love them more because we grow with them. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then even, yeah, th them, and then it not just being about their relationships too was kind of helpful. Like I felt a bond with him and his friend and I felt a bond with her and her friends. It was, yeah, again, I just feel like I was having a peek into like a person's life for real. <laughs> like it really, it really felt like that. And it's crazy because the movie's not incredibly long. So it's just, you know, it was just, just good timing for it. Um, and then RIP Carrie Fisher. It was so nice to see her. I always forget she's in the movie <laughs> until I'm watching it. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, her and um, Bruno Kirby, the guy who played Jess, like, uh, they're they're terrific. They're such a great pair that bounce off each other in this thing and, you know, being the opposites or being the sidekicks to the two mains. It's just, they're yeah, they're great. I didn't look it up, but would you guys say that the movie feels like it could have been, like, based on a play? Like, did I get, like, theater, like, a, a show vibe from it sometimes, too. You know what it is? It's, it, I don't think it is based on the play. I think it has a lot to do with the writing. This thing's very dialogue heavy with the scenes going back mm -hmm. and forth. And whenever they're doing the scenes, they're usually like sort of in one space or one area. So it feels like it could be a play. Um, I think, oh, yeah, I'll let you finish that thought. I had a different thought I was going to go to next, but go ahead. Oh, yeah, that was it. I'm just saying if you guys agree that, yeah, I feel like they had like heavy monologues sometimes. And yeah, like, it, there definitely is. We, we really do get to know these people, don't we? For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. I it, all that is what makes it lovable. And I guess when you have strong, a lot of dialogue, but it's obviously well written dialogue, and you have two people who are very funny, who can bounce the the, the jokes and the ideas off each other, and you know, it, yeah, it's it's really. I don't know if people always look at this movie and say, wow, Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan, their acting is so good in this movie, but it really is. You always hear about how charming they are and how a great couple they are and, you know, like how funny Billy Crystal is. Like, you don't hear how funny Meg Ryan is nearly enough, but she's <laughs> fantastic in this movie. Um, but yeah, like people don't talk about the acting, how good, the, like it really is this thing. Like there's not a, all, all the actors are good in this. And obviously the director is very good. Mm -hmm. I tell you what I do love. A lot of the cinematography is great. The colors, like when they're, you know, in Central Park in the fall and everything's like red and orange and yellow. And that's just gorgeous. Like that's like the ideal in, in like someone's head, like strolling through New York, falling in love in the fall. Like it's, mm -hmm. it, it's just, it looks like a piece of poetry. Yeah. I love fall colors in general. It's one thing I, miss about not living in like and not like not being in LA because like Atlanta had it a little bit but definitely in the Midwest where I, I grew up for half my childhood I miss like those brown leaves and <laughs> and like it just a fall look yeah it was really pretty yeah. 
totally. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a long time myself. It's uh, it's bad news. <laughs> All right, so um, I guess we can jump into favorite character. Who would you guys say is your favorite character? Uh, I gotta say Meg Ryan's my favorite character in this. I mean, Billy Crystal might be like kind of an obvious choice, but I really like Meg Ryan. And I also liked um, uh, Bruno or Jess. Um, I, I really liked him too. But Meg Ryan's like, she's, she's just so effortlessly charming that it doesn't you can tell it's acting but you but it's really good acting in i mean but you can't tell it's acting but you can you know what i mean you know she's acting but she just seems so natural and confident in who that character is and you know she's just on point in every scene to me and like i'm sure billy crystal was probably like more of the heavyweight when they shot this thing i'm guessing you know but she just she's got the goods man you know and she to for me she carries this thing like infinitely not to say that billy wasn't great either but she just i don't know <laughs> there's something about her work that, that she was doing where it's just it was really remarkable stuff that i don't think anybody else could have pulled off at that time or maybe even today it's just what she did was super special agreed agreed what about you steve it's tough because, like, I, I want to concur with my fellow man uh, and say Sally. You know, Sally carried the film for sure. Uh, but I, man, to me, those old people did it for me. <laughs> I, I, I got to give it up. And, and it's like, I would say 98% of them, like, made the movie for me. It's probably like a couple. I was like, ah, whatever. Because I'm, I'm legit curious. I'm, I'm now, like, even thinking, like, where like some of them doesn't have to be all of them, but were some of them like legit real couple, or was it like all actors? That's a good question. Uh, I, I went kind of back and forth on it. I feel like like I the Japan, like, like the Japanese ones. I, I don't know. I mean, they're not credited. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I feel know. like they were probably real couples, but maybe with a little bit of a performance background. Mm. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I yeah, because I'm looking at IM, IMDb. I don't know why I stuttered there, and I'm not seeing any same last names. <laughs> so it's oh, like, yeah. it's are like, they, what are they labeled as? Like old couple one and two, or what is it? It's no, it's it's all one genre or one um, group. It's called documentary couple, and okay. it, it says Connie Sawyer, Charles Duggan, Catherine Squire, Al Christie. Francis Cheney, and they all are listed as a documentary couple, and okay. um, no one has the same last name. Dang, that's some good acting too. Then, so I might have to agree with you, Steve. Because I mean, I'm glad you brought that up, Steve, because I never <laughs> even considered it. I just like these are old people. That's all I knew. It's crazy because the chemistry was wild. They definitely portrayed that feeling like that. Um. Cause it is crazy. I think about that all the time when I want to strangle my own husband. It's like one day we're gonna be so old, and none of this is gonna matter. Like you're literally not gonna give a fudge. You're just gonna love that person. I mean, if, you know, if you make it. <laughs> um, but like, and all the things we thought were so serious and so annoying and so like, yeah, it's like, and yeah, and it's just a story to be told. Like the one I think you'd kind of brought it up. Like one of the couples had gotten a divorce, and then they got married. Again, and it's just like, man, it's just not always perfect. It's not always a, a timeline, you know. I think um, Sally was bringing it up and her friends a couple times. Like, you feel like you got to rush. Like, I'm going to be 40. I'm going to do this. And it's like, man, just enjoy life now. Like, because one day we sit on a couch and you don't even remember people. She was names. looking eight years in the future. She was looking to be <laughs> eight years more miserable later. Like, in eight years, I'm going to be really miserable. Like, come on, lady. So, yeah, but my favorite still was probably Harry's character. I just love um, cynical men as homeboys. <laughs> he reminds me of, like, every guy friend I've ever had. <laughs> like, just, like, when you're, yeah, it's just, like, that, that guy that um doesn't love easily. And nine times out of ten, the one he ends up marrying is it? <laughs> <laughs> just doesn't leaves them high and dry too because it's like you got to open up your heart and you end up like not attracting you kind of attract heartless people when you 
have like this mindset. Like he literally was just getting married because he said he was tired of the single life and wondering um, how long he has to stay in the bed so he doesn't hurt somebody's feelings. Like what a mindset. Like he really had to grow up on that one. How long do you have to get right? That's great. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's your biggest stress. That's why you want to settle down so you can stop having like awkward next day encounters with women. Like what is happening here? Like I can't even be mad at his ex-wife because like you literally didn't even like. She asked him if he's getting married. He didn't say because I love her. <laughs> it was like you get tired of being single. And it's like, yes. so you can't be mad if she resents you years later. And not, not the first man I first say that actually. So. <laughs> I got my eyes out. I got, you know, I got my ears out waiting for the, like, that's not what you're supposed to say. <laughs> Actually, I've heard men say inappropriate things moments after being married. And it's like, why would you say that? And it's like, yep, this thing is doomed. And it was, and it was doomed. Yeah. I mean, there's societal pressure on both parts. I feel like women get it the most, but eventually I noticed like, even like with, some of like John's maybe like associates, maybe not all like close friends. Like some of the people see people happy in a marriage and then that's why they want it. It's like, no, just like wait until someone just makes you want to be with them because you love them. Not so much as like, dang, all my homies are getting married. I might as well. It's like, what is happening? <laughs> it's just like, it's like musical chair. It's like the, the girl that's around when you finally are like, yeah, might as well. That's crazy talk. But yeah, that's a whole other story. And then on the other hand, I feel like sometimes women settle down too fast because they just want to get picked and then they end up with somebody just because that person loves them. And it's like, yeah, you know, so, so many different things. So I, I get it. You know, it's sad that people say don't have the best intentions. So again, that's why I really like this movie because it's like, it's talking about like meeting people when you're emotionally mature, like, and sometimes you meet them too soon and you're not ready. Um, so this was really good, well-written thing. Yeah. Um, I also like there's no infidelity. I feel like late 80s, early 90s, <laughs> like, it was like somebody's always stealing somebody's husband or fiance. You know, like those movies where it's like, mm -hmm. oh, you don't know the real me. And so I don't like that. I like that, like, they would be in relationships and respect them, except for, like, the college one. Like, he was so willing to just jump. But let me get me. He was, like, you know, 18 right. years old. But they would like they didn't hang out until he got divorced like you know like i like that they did that instead of it just being like this thing where he leaves his fiance because she doesn't like chocolate cake like meg ryan does like i hated that concept in the, in the 90s like what like yeah. this is not you guys should have broken I up i think before. that's what kind of makes it i think that's what kind of makes the movie very sweet because it's like they made sure they, they didn't give us much reason to hate these people or to dislike them or feel like there was like some level of, uh, I don't know, you know, wickedness or, un you know, sultry character or something. Was there any moment in the movie that you thought something? Sorry, something I said a sultry character, I mean, not savory. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, something something weird could have happened, but they went the other way. Like for example, I'll give you mine. Mm -hmm. Mine was when he came back to try to get, win her back, and he uh, they were like there, and I thought, is he just gonna? You know, we live in a different era too. I was like, mm -hmm. is he gonna kiss her without consent? <laughs> like, <that was> <laughs> Well, so I will say, I, I don't know if it's like as weird as what you're saying, <laughs> but but for just as far as just like, because I'm so used to these movies going a different way, right? I had to use the bathroom like when they were on the road trip. And so I came back and they were at the airport and I was like, oh shoot, I missed it. And I was like, John, did they have sex? I thought they were going to have sex on that road trip. Like I thought she was going to like not... Um, you know, she was like, it was like, oh, you can't, I can't date you. You're with my, with my friend and da, da, da. And so I thought in that moment I went to the bathroom, I missed them sleeping together or something. So that was just interesting to me that they really kept it clean like that. Like, no, it's like, I would never sleep with my friend's guy and you know, life goes on. So I'm, I'm yeah. glad. Yeah, I'm glad too. they did. That was kind of cool. But I did think. They were respectable people. Yeah. 
They were very respectable people. I think, I mean, yeah, there's it, there's no way they could charm charm us the way they did if they weren't respectable every step of the way. I think maybe that's a lesson learned. But yeah, everything today, it's so drama filled and so like scantless and like that's what people want to see. They want to see negative stuff and maybe it makes them feel better about their own misgivings. I don't know, but that's that is where the culture is now. Like bring back sweet movies like this. Yeah, the, I feel like the the era, like I'm very proud of of how certain things have come in society. Like, you know, now, you know, we got guys thinking about consent when they watch things like that. I love that. You know, that has because of what is now programmed in your head too. But I do feel like on the other hand, um, because we, we're, we're like, it's a very selfish era. So yeah, it's very rare now where people do the right things in these stories because people rather see them do the wrong thing and they get the suspicion or they're going to get caught. or they gonna, Like, so like it is the drama people crave a little bit more now as to where like the rom-coms of the past were just like, were a lot sweeter. Like, like just like cute plots. Nobody's trying to, even like Carrie Fisher was like sleeping with a married man and didn't feel <laughs> like it didn't feel wrong. It didn't, they didn't make that like so interesting. It was just like, girl, leave him. You keep saying that. It was just a joke. Like just in like, it right. just wasn't, she's like, he's never going to leave her. It was just kind of funny, but like. <laughs> right. Yeah. It was more of a bit than anything. Yeah. Whereas like that's full plot now. Like, there's no scandalous affair happening in these movies. Like people are changing the channel. <laughs> yeah, really. Really? Cool. So we kind of what else? What else? What? Oh, wait. What else you know, should we talk about with this movie? I mean, I feel like there's so much because we could I was gonna even say like favorite old couple, but we kind of I feel like we all liked we all like the one with the memory loss. I don't know. Did you guys have another couple that stood out in those documentary styled scenes? Well, I'm gonna tell you something that got me a little disappointed. Oh, no. <laughs> and that was that I was expecting to see an older Billy Crystal and Meg. Mm. And mm. when they just showed up as like themselves, I was a little without like, it could have been themselves, but with like heavier makeup, I don't know, looking a yeah. little older. I think that would have put the cherry on top for me because I was legit waiting for that moment. Because the first couple, I thought it was them. That and, Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. But then when they started putting the other couples, I was like, oh, no, these are just other older people that are not even necessarily connected to the main characters. They're just talking about their love story. Right. Yeah. And then but I was like, at one point, the payoff is to show them. So I was like, when I they, guess I thought that too. When they get shown, they better be old. And I was <laughs> like, it was them like five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know what I was expecting with that. Like it was such a gem that I didn't even I wasn't even expecting them to show them in it at all. I don't know what was happening. I don't know. I was just on Love Island. I don't know. <laughs> It was just like, but yeah, that would have been a cool touch. Like, like this is, it all led up to them now that they're older and everything's been working out. Then now they're on this documentary. Um, Do you guys feel like, um, like, because setting is very important to this thing. Like New York practically is a character in it, right? Um, you know, and, and things have become famous. Like, you know, a walk through Central Park is probably more famous because this movie happened than it's not, even though Central Park's very, you know, but like a romantic walk through Central Park. Like it photographs New York so beautifully. And then like things have become famous, like Cat's Deli. You know, everybody makes a point to go to Cat's Deli because of this movie. And I don't know if you guys have ever been, but there is a sign pointing down at the seat where like, oh, Meg Ryan and Billy Crystal sat here or whatever, like a little mm. thing pointing. Um, and you know, I'll have what she's having like that. Like I, I, I would imagine everyone who's been the cat's deli because of that movie has made a point to say, I'll have what she's having, you know, oh, like funny. it's a thing. <laughs> like this movie made a lot of things iconic. I, yeah. I feel like. Even like storyline, like, um, so, okay. So what I was going to talk about next was like, what chapter of their relationship was your favorite? 
Um, but before we answer that, I was going to say, like, regarding the chapters, I feel like there have been movies made with plots just based on one chapter of their relationship. You know what I mean? Like, just even, um, just like the concept of you go on a road trip with with somebody and you don't like them at first and you like them in the end. Or the concept of um, you try to hook people up on a blind date and then you end up liking <laughs> the other person. Like stuff like that. I feel like there's been so many stories. I don't know if they're necessarily were inspired by this, but it just seems like um, so many different things that happened in this movie on their own have been a movie that comes out um, on like one particular love story. Um, but yeah, so as like far as like each chapter they were in, they were, what would you say is your favorite moment for them? Mm. It's a really good question. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I wish I, I wish I had a, why don't you guys go first? Let me think about it. <laughs> Do you need to think too, Steve, or do you have one? Uh, I can think of one, but it's not necessarily of them. Them. Okay. Uh, it's kind of it's it's them, but separated, I guess. Okay. So like her when she was like you know getting the salad and being very specific and being like high maintenance, and they were like talking on the phone and they were like separated, but it seems like they were together. How the camera placement was. Because they were basically doing the exact same thing, just in separate houses. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's they, they were getting close. They were becoming best friends in those yes. moments. I feel like yep. uh, mine kind of is around Very that close. same era too, because like they they still had like phases. Like I feel like they always had like this chemistry where they could tell each other the truth, which is kind of cool. Like even if it didn't end well the first time or the second time but I do like that era kind of like basically after his divorce like I feel like they get super close they're you know in the music store singing together they can talk and communicate well um yeah that was probably my favorite era for them too like the friend the true friendship stage where they're not judging each other they're accepting each other and just getting to know each other um they're doing the thing he said can't happen they were being friends of the opposite yep. <laughs> yeah i think you guys picked the moments that are like the most crucial for the film um and i would agree with you on that but i would agree with the caveat that there's something that, that the first time we meet them when they're like young kids or whatever in college there's something special about that to me because for me it's like the most exciting point of their lives because also we like we know they're going to get together we have no clue how that's going to happen from here, but they left us on such a high note coming out of that, going into their next phase. Like, I think she's worked for the airline or whatever, like, and you know, now she's like, you know, she's following the trajectory that she kind of had set for herself, like with this guy or whatever. That, that makes the movie very exciting to me. Like that moment into that transition. Cause you're like, you're like, I don't know how this is going to work, but <laughs> I'm here for it. You know what I mean? I feel like it's just, it's almost like it's very actiony. It's very, uh, it's very exciting, that, that opening part for me. Yeah. I mean, it's the name of the movie, huh? Right. <laughs> How they, when they met. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of disappointments, though, kind of sad that um, the lady that kind of accidentally hooked him up never, <laughs> we never saw her again. Mm -hmm. um, nope. That I was wondering what happened to her. I know. <laughs> Um, some a part of me wishes this movie was maybe twenty minutes longer, so maybe we could have had some of that. I I kind of wish there was like it might have made like the interaction at the airport a little less dramatic, but I kind of wish there was a little snippet of them in their college life. Um, it was a yeah, that was a pretty huge leap, and like maybe just one dating experience or something with somebody else, and then, um, but. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. Overall, yeah. Every every phase of their relationship was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Have you talking guys ever about, talking oh. about that college stuff? I did notice they put a lot of makeup on Billy Crystal during that time. <laughs> well, like I said before, that he had a close because I literally again had no idea what this movie was about. Like I thought 
I don't know. I thought they looked like they did on the cover the whole time. I didn't know it was going to be a flashback scene or anything. So I was like, John, is it just me? Or does every time the camera gets closer, Billy Crystal looks older? <laughs> like, what? Like, something's not right here. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love that. Because he started off so far away. He's kissing the girl, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, he gets in the car, and I'm just like, Something's different. <laughs> Something's different. It. And then he ends up like sitting on a bench or something or somewhere where they're on the road on their trip. I was like, wait a minute. This is no, he has to be older than he looks right now. <laughs> and then they jump to the next one and his hair is back <laughs> instead of the bang. Shout out to the makeup department for <laughs> fooling Marina in in 2024. <laughs> I was just like, oh, that's that's the Billy I know. <laughs> I've never seen. I've never seen Justin right. Bieber haircut be um Billy before. Um, you know, I probably had similar thoughts the first time I saw this as well. If I'm if I'm thinking clearly, um, I, I I definitely remember feeling the way you felt. Like, wait, why why are they so young? Are they feel older on the box cover? Like, what is what's happening right now? Like yeah. that definitely confused me the first time I saw it. I remember that. Yeah, Meg did a good job too. Um, as far as like the blue eyeshadow and stuff, because I was like, "Wow, I've never seen her this young either." But yeah, she wasn't that young. She was around the age that I do know her from. Like by the time they got back to current times, quote unquote. But but yeah, all right. Well, anything else you guys want to talk about? Or are we are we final thoughting it up? So this is the movie that gave Billy Crystal the chance to host the Oscars like forty times. Is it? I'm sure it was more of a career thing. <laughs> a total spectrum of his work. I, I'm guessing. I don't know. But I'm sure this did have a big part to do with it. I mean, this is 1989. This movie came out. Actually, um, it's 89. I, a number. Another. Get down. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, I looked up to see if they had won anything. Awards. And they were up for some stuff, but they only ended up winning a BAFTA award for Best Original Screenplay. Um, yeah, Hollywood's not like when it comes to awards. Hollywood isn't really that uh, fond of comedies when mm -hmm. it comes to awards. This thing probably deserves some stuff. I mean, I guess it depends on what else came out in 1989. I know Batman came out in 1989. Did, did this? Do you have numbers for the movie? Oh yeah, I, was gonna I don't. I don't have the numbers up, but I'm. I bet you it was successful. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, I, I'm. I am curious. I mean, it's, it was a different time. Yeah, I am curious now who they lost to <laughs> for anything else because I think they were up for. Um, so they had a budget of sixteen million um, for this movie. Is it showing how much they made or no? Let's save that. And for the now. box office on it was. Uh, uh, I uh, typed in something weird, I think. Uh, <laughs> 92.8 million. So oh, that's great. Blockbuster. Blockbuster. That's really good, especially for 89. Well, here's the thing. When it first came out, it was only in 775 theaters mm -hmm. during its first uh, part of its release, and it made 8.8 .8 million its first weekend. But then, like it later got expanded to one thousand one hundred and seventy four theaters. So they, you know, added like I don't know thirty percent more theaters or something like that, and ultimately it grossed ninety two point eight, which is, which means they did a good job. They did a good thing. America really came out to see this movie at the time, or the yeah. world. I yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad. We got this out because I mean I know you've already seen it, but yeah, I'm I was super I'm surprised glad to share this movie with you guys because, like I said, as far as romantic comedies go, this thing is great. To, it's it's top notch. It's number one. But I will say this: the more I watch this movie, uh, I used to feel like this movie was kind of unattainable. Like no one can ever surpass this as a romantic comedy. It does seem more vulnerable the more I watch it, feeling like maybe there is a better romantic comedy out there. And there's been some close, there's been some close number twos and threes. Um, my number two is Annie Hall. And my number three is a movie that came out not that long ago. It was, uh, I think it was called, wait, The Big Sick? Is that what it's called? 
the one with uh, Kumar uh, Ninjanji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I mean, that might be that might be better. I don't know, but Harry McSally is like it's so utterly charming that it's hard to be dethroned. I'm trying to think what my top three are. You know yours, Steve? Top three romantic comedies? Favorite. Uh, I have to think, but like for sure that that one that he said, that one's for sure one of those screeners that I got and I was like, oh, this movie's amazing. The big sick, um, right? That's, that's yeah. what it's called. I, I really like Just Friends. Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Uh Romantic comedy. Yeah, it's Actually, tough because I have like dramatic love movies that I, you know, come to mind immediately. But just like what yeah. what what comes to mind immediately? Well, not it's not rom it's not comedy. It's just romantic. What is it? <laughs> um, love story. Love story. Because I, I think I too am a sucker for movies where someone does get sick. Oh. <laughs> Because it is tough, man. Like oh, love story. Yeah, I've never seen love story. That's uh, Ryan O'Neill, right? Yeah, I've heard the actors. I just remember being a kid, crying my eyes out, and it's always been my favorite. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan O'Neill. I think that's Ryan O'Neill. Yeah. Um, this one has been on my my list for a long time. I I don't know why I've never gotten to it. Um. But yeah, I really don't know my romantic comedies that I love. Like the ones you guys are saying are good. Like I, I cried heavily to Big Sick. I really liked this movie. But I would need to take a step back and really think like favorite that's about love, but it's also a little funny. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely, you know what? I can't think of the name, but just because it keeps popping up in my head, I'm going to look it up. And I said something earlier about like Steve Martin movies being – um. Do you remember that movie he was in where he, um, he this Goldie Hawn and him are in a movie together? Um, the Out of Towners? House Sitter. House Sitter. Okay. And yeah. then, okay, I got it. House Sitter, Karina Karina, and... Oh, it was just on my tip of my tongue. How Sitter, Karina Karina. Oh my gosh. I was just laughing in my head about this. And now it's gone. What happened what? here? Dang, I lost it. It was a good number three. Whatever. <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay. How Sitter, Karina Karina, and Milk Money. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That's, that's all, folks. <laughs> all right. Well, we can talk about love all day. My ultimate favorite is you got served four. But... Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Step up seven. Love in the dark. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen Karina Karina or Milk Money. Okay. Have you seen House Sitter? Did you figure out if you had? I don't know if I've seen that or not. I mean, it's Steve Martin and Goldie Hahn. Like, maybe. <laughs> It's really good because, like, um, these are like core memories. Like, I was, I feel like a lot of times, like, our fresh perspective on love. I was a child, so it's like if it could affect me as like a seven, eight year old watching it, and I really laughed and I loved them falling in love. Mm -hmm. Like, I, that's why it stuck to me. Because yeah, the big, some of these are current. Like, I, I like them, but like those, I'll never forget those movies. Um, awesome. Okay. So let's jump in to final thoughts. Um, I guess we'll start how we started, finish how we started, Jason. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so final thought is that I love this movie. I would recommend it to everyone. There's no one who doesn't deserve this movie. I feel like, you know, just like we all deserve love, everyone deserves when Harry met Sally. <clears throat> um, if you don't like it, that's on you. That's really your problem because the rest of us, we like it. Uh, would I watch it again? Absolutely. I'll watch this thing a number of times more, I'm sure. Um, I would like to watch this with a partner. I would like to watch this with a friend in a boat with a goat, you know, whatever. Like, this thing is awesome. I love this movie. Like I said, maybe the best romantic comedy ever made. Um, those are my final thoughts. 
Yay. Boat with the goat. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, why are you pointing at me? You know, you're next. I didn't know. Uh, but final thoughts. Uh, this movie is great. Everybody should watch it. Final thoughts. Oh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, All that, right. That's what I yeah. So my final thoughts were, yes, it was a great movie. Um, again, I feel like I say this a lot, but I don't know who to recommend it to because I feel like I was the last person on earth to not see it. Well, I guess me and Steve. <laughs> but um, yeah, I recommend it to anybody that like we're talking about love movies or even not even just like the ones that are funny. And I'd be like, oh, did you ever see that when Harry met Sally? I'd recommend it to them. Um, I probably watch it again. Like I think Steve said in the beginning, like it's something you can have on in the background. Like it's just cute. It's just one of those things like if it comes on TV, you don't change the channel. Cause like even if you like catch it 30 minutes in, I think it's like that adorable to where it's just cute. If, even if you see the last 20 minutes, like it's just one of those movies that every scene is like noteworthy um to watch. Um I super appreciate it. Like I guess this is probably my favorite of Meg. I love her like in like other movies she's done. Like she was also in like Sleepless in Seattle, which is also iconic. But like, I don't know. I feel like other movies, she felt a little smaller in her role. Um, like the love story itself kind of overrode um, her acting. So this was a really cool movie to see where like she had to act a lot more she had more lines like it's just like i saw her as an actress more in this time around like a passionate actress whereas in some of the other stuff i just feel like she's a small part in a love story so it's kind of cool to see her have a little bit more range this time around as well but yeah super loved it um and glad i can finally check it off my list because i always feel left out and people quote it and i'm like hey, hey, that's funny but now yeah i know <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's Thank the you. that's the worst, isn't it? When like the whole world has seen the movie and they're all quoting it, and you're sitting there like, uh -huh. and like, <laughs> why haven't you watched this movie that everyone on earth has seen? Especially for me, like um, films that were very popular in the black community. <laughs> oh sure. I just watched Friday like two years ago, and oh, I'm God. I'm not proud, but <laughs> I just didn't grow up with certain things. Like I just have so many on a life a very long list of TV shows and movies that I got to check off so I can regain my black card. <laughs> That's right. Because it is revoked as of right now, honey. Um, <laughs> That's great. All righty. You got any questions for us, Jason? Or what? I don't know. Glad that you asked because uh, my question is, Steve, what do you got for us next week? Uh, next week, uh, I don't know why you asked me because you pretty much should know at this point. Now you're next. Who oh, me? Yes, you. Okay. Well, uh, for this week, I actually wanted to. Uh, th this really is about you this week, Marina. I don't know what this movie is about, but <laughs> I know that you're going to probably despise me and then love me for it because it checks off a lot of your your list. Um, it is a black and white foreign film, but it's in dedication to your uh, most recent journey to Italy. For next week, we're watching La Dolce Vita. Interesting. Another Fellini film. <laughs> As you guys remember, our last film. I wish you would have used the other box cover, Steve, but this one's good too. This is like an old Hollywood uh, uh, box cover. I feel um, like she's saying we don't talk about Bruno. No, no. <laughs> it does. It's, it's definitely giving those type of vibes. Uh the first Fellini film we watched um was uh, eight and a half. So this is from the same same filmmaker. Uh maybe this one won't be as uh as uh, abstract and esoteric. We'll see. This is another movie that encourages people to smoke. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Making smoking look cool since nineteen forty two. It goes for Jason Echoes, Marina, and Misty Festival. We'll catch you next week. Bye bye.